Hey guys, welcome to another episode of RC Pit Stop. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you some of the equipment that I've been using over the last 18 months or so to record the videos that you guys see on my channel. Uh, I've had a few people ask me during that time, um, you know, how is it that I can record and uh, drive my RCs at the same time? So I figured, you know, it would probably be a good time to show you all of the equipment uh, that I actually use uh, to record the videos that you see. Now, a bit of a quick disclaimer before I get stuck into all of this. Um, you know, this is what works for me. This is what I use, is what works for me. Doesn't it does not mean that this is what's going to work for you. Uh, but hopefully you might get some hints and tips or some ideas of how you can, uh, you know, uh, record your own videos or even start your own channel because I know that there are some people out there that, you know, want to do their own thing. So, we're going to start off with some cameras. Uh, the camera that I'm recording on right now is this guy here, which is the Canon Legria um, HF M52. Um, I've had this guy for quite a while now. I bought it pretty early on um, when I started the channel. Uh, and it's, you know, this one here is a little bit pricey. It's about $750 odd dollars. Um, you can obviously get a lot cheaper than that, but the one reason why I bought this one was because it has a microphone jack. So the microphone that I'm talking to you on right now is plugged into the camera. Um, and you know, it's a Canon, it's a pretty decent camera. Um, the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition is the next camera that I use. Um, I certainly didn't start with this one. I bought this one, I think it was at the start of 2013. Um, and of course, since they've upgraded to the uh, GoPro Hero 3 Plus, which is smaller. Uh, but this one, you know, it allows me to do some really good slow-mo shots. If you guys uh, see some of the uh, GoPro Hero 3 Bash videos that I do, um, you know, I use this guy. Uh, it, allow, you know, it records at 240 frames per second, which gives me great slow motion shots. Um, and it allows me to get really um, good shots, especially with the some of the trail videos that I've done. I actually get some pretty good footage out of this guy. Uh, so I use that as well. Um, boom mic. Uh, I didn't start with the boom mic. This sort of came afterwards. And this is not my first one. I actually have, I still have it, but I don't use it anymore. I had a cheaper one uh, that I bought online and I didn't really like the sound quality of that. So uh, eventually I took the plunge and uh, bought a much more expensive one and a, and a little bit more of a reliable brand. Uh, this guy, it's probably one of the cheaper ones from Rode. This was, I think, just over $100, but they do have some that go well over $200. Um, so it really depends on your budget and what it is that uh, suits you. This one's a little bit big. Uh, I may one day upgrade to a smaller mic or a completely different camera, I don't know, but uh, until then, this one's doing the job just fine. Uh, this guy here, this is a what's called a dead cat. It's a synthetic sort of glove thing that goes over the mic to prevent wind noise. So if you're out there shooting on a slightly windy day, um, this will actually uh, sort of muffle the wind noise a little bit. It does muffle the sound overall, so uh, it's important that you are talking maybe a little bit louder, just a couple of decibels, to make sure that you heard loud and clear on that one. Uh, lenses, some cameras have optional lenses that you can attach to them. Um, I bought this one probably about two or three months ago. It's this one here. Uh, and you can probably see a little bit of a bluish sort of tint to the glass. Now, initially I didn't think that that was going to show up on film, but it has. And some people have actually pointed that out. They don't like that blue tint. Uh, the reason why I bought this one was to give me a wider viewing angle. Uh, the camera can only do so much and I wanted something that gives me a little bit more of a wider viewing angle. So I bought this uh, thing. It wasn't expensive. It was like 20 bucks. Um, but because of the blue tint, I've been a little bit hesitant in using it recently. Um, and I'm sort of looking at other options. So I do want to still use a lens, um, but I've just got to try and find one that doesn't have any tints to it. So lenses are again another option that you guys can do. Um, Tripods. Tripods are important, especially if you're doing uh, videos like I'm the one I'm doing right now. Um, it allows the camera to be nice and steady, and uh, you know you're free to do whatever it is you want to do in front of the camera. I started with this guy right here. This was the first tripod I bought. Um, I bought this from my local electronics store. It cost me about 20 bucks, and uh, you know you can mount your camera on there. You can tilt it, do whatever it is. You know, adjust the height of it. The only thing is. This guy is only about five foot high at full extension, so it only comes to about there. So if I was using this 
a tripod while I'm talking to you right now, I'd sort of be talking down, um, and that's really not ideal. So, um, or I'd have to sort of squat down a little bit. So I upgraded to a, a larger tripod, which is what the camera is mounted on at the moment. This one was around 20 bucks. The one that the camera is mounted on now is about $100, but at least it's six foot high, and um, you know, pretty much stays at eye level with me. Um, these ones here, these are sort of like cheaper, flexible tripods that I use out on the field. Um, I've used these to do a couple of my drift videos as well as the uh, two or three scaling, uh, trailing videos that I've done as well with the uh, Telluride and the Honcho. So um, the good thing with these is that you can manipulate the legs, whoops, uh, you can manipulate the legs to uh, sort of position the, um, the, the tripod wherever you want. So that's the idea with these guys, um, so that um, you know, if you're sort of putting it on a rock or something like that, you can uh, adjust the legs accordingly. And these weren't, they're not expensive. These were like, uh, I think this one here cost me like two bucks off eBay. And this one was, I think, just under $10, something like that. So pretty cheap um, tripods and um, you know you can get some pretty good shots with them. Uh, the bigger one is for the camera, for the, for the Canon. The little one is I use for the GoPro. Um, these ones here, these are handheld um, sort of, I don't know, stabilizers, I guess you'd call them. Um, great for some low down shots. You know, you can really get down uh, and get the, the car sort of coming in. Obviously, this is not something that you, it, you can really do as you're driving the RC, but I did do it at once. Uh, what I did is I, um, I'll swap hands here just quickly. I actually put this on the remote like that, and uh, I was able to sort of film and um, drive at the same time, although it was a little bit tricky because it kind of just dangles there. Um, but I've used this one quite a few times. Uh, I've had uh, a couple of guys use this one to help me uh, shoot a couple of videos in the past. Uh, this one here is brand new, I haven't used it yet. Um, it just has a different mount to it on the base. Um, the, this guy has got all these slots in it and everything, and um, the camera, especially with the GoPro, doesn't really stay very steady, so I, I bought a different one um, to be able to hopefully fix that problem. Whilst I've got the remote in my hand, this is one of the ways that you can drive and record at the same time. The mounts and the brackets that you see here all came in the box with the GoPro when I bought it. Um, and you can basically, you know, just uh, drive and record as I do, same thing. Um, so you just basically, you know, the GoPro just mounted straight onto your remote. Uh, it's probably not gonna work with every single remote, uh, but it should work with most. This here is something that I've bought and I haven't used yet. This is an extendable pole, basically comes out like so. And uh, it has a little mount up the top here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. That uh, focuses in just like so. Undo this and that actually tilts. And uh, you mount your GoPro there and uh, you know you can get pretty close to your, um, to your car while you're far away so you, you know you don't get hit. Um, or you can even point it towards you and uh, you know take a selfie if you want. Uh, it's up to you. Um, but this, you know, this is again something that I'll, I'll need somebody to help me uh, record uh, with this guy. It's not something that you can sort of drive and record at the same time. Uh, the plate that the GoPro comes mounted on in the box, which is this one here, uh, I've got a separate video showing you how to mount a GoPro onto your RC. Um, now it doesn't work for every RC, and certainly not for every scale, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on it here uh, because I've done a separate video for that already and I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. Basically I use magnets. I taped a couple of magnets to the, um, to the base of this plate and then you put a couple of more magnets inside the actual uh, body of the RC and that will just stick to the, to the roof or the bonnet depending on how much space you have and uh, that way you can record and get um, you know, footage on the actual car itself. Check out the video in the description, I'll go into more detail there and you'll be able to see it. Uh, the head strap is again another thing that I use. Um, I use this primarily for the um, uh, Helimax 1SQ V-Cam uh, videos when I was flying it as well as the uh, Latrax alias. Um, so basically you know you put it on your head just like a hat and um, you mount your GoPro on the front, 
Uh, now the good thing with the GoPro being a Wi-Fi is that there is an app that you can have on your phone and you'll be able to see um, what you're about to, to film before you press record. So if, um, you know, it just gives you the opportunity to adjust the height of the uh, GoPro so that you're not sort of like pointing too far down or too far up and uh, that way, you know, you get what it is, what it is that you're filming in frame. And now this one here, this last one, is uh, the harness that I use to record all of my running videos of the RCs that you see behind me. Um, so basically, this is a $30 or maybe even $40 item off eBay. Um, and I'll show you how it works. Undo this here. It opens up like that, all right? And it's got a little lock-in knob just here. So you basically, I open it up pretty much all the way. Um, because that's just the size that I am. Uh, depending on how big you are, you may want to you know, adjust it accordingly. So I mount it on my right shoulder. You can have it on the left shoulder, but the thing is the camera has the screen on the left-hand side. So when you open it up, um, it'll be sort of in front of me. If I have it on this shoulder, uh, the camera would sort of, I'll sort of be looking over the camera to uh, see the screen. So I have it on my right shoulder and it just, you know, I'm used to it, it feels comfortable this way. So basically it sits like that, um, just on the shoulder, and then this strap here goes around your back, and it comes around the front, and then you just clip it into, a, into place. Then it, there's an adjustment here, so you make sure that it's nice and tight, but not too tight to the point where it's uncomfortable. Um, it does take a little bit to get used to, getting used to. This uh, base here kind of sits pretty low, kind of like on your ribs. Um, it doesn't really sit on your belly, but I guess if you're smaller, it might. Um, and it basically just sits like that, so you can see how it works. Um, you've got various different mounting positions, but I've got it set up this way. I mount my camera straight on top here, and uh, now I can uh, record and drive my RCs at the same time. But it does take a little bit of practice of getting used to, uh, because generally when you're out and about just bashing, you'll be sitting in the one position, just driving around, and you know your head will be moving, but your body will generally stay still. You need to move your body when you've got this on if you want to get your car in shot. Uh, so as the car is moving around in front of you, you need to make sure that you, um, you know, move with uh, your head movement. So you kind of like, you have to sort of freeze your neck, so to speak, um, and you know, allow your shoulders to follow. And it's the same thing as you're going, you know, if the car comes closer, you need to sort of angle down a little bit. If you take a jump, you need to sort of move up a little bit, make sure that you keep the car in frame. Initially, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be looking at the car or the screen, but eventually I learned to just look at the car. I can't do it just looking at the screen. I keep the screen in my peripheral vision, um, but once I've got the camera sort of positioned in the way that I want, um, I just uh, look at the car and I just move around and record it that way. It takes a little bit of practice guys, it's not something that you sort of pick up in five minutes but um, because I know that in some of my videos if you look hard enough uh, there are some videos that I've got on my channel where the car sometimes falls out of shot uh, but generally you know it stays in frame and, and it, you guys get the idea of how it runs. Mounting positions, you've got this uh, bracket here that I've got on a right angle, you can have it straight. If you don't like the bracket you can always take it off, mount it on this platform or this platform right here or you can take the middle plate off and actually mount the bracket on the first platform back here. So there's a few options of how you can actually mount your camera. Um, and then it just, you know, you undo the little knob here, this thing sort of folds up, and uh, that's pretty much how I do my running videos. Uh, and as I said at the start, you know, this is what works for me. It may not be the um, thing that works for you. I mean, if you don't like this idea, don't have to use it. Um, but uh, for those of you who have asked me, you know, how I record and and uh, drive my RCs at the same time, this is the equipment that I use. Now, I will give you guys uh, just a couple of pointers as well into, you know, if you're, if you're planning into uh, producing your own uh, videos and, and starting your own channel, or if you want, you know, just some hints and tips on how to make your videos a little bit better, uh, there's really four things that you need to consider. One is lighting, and make sure that it's the right color of light as well. Uh, if you're using incandescent globes, 
uh, they tend to have a, a very warm color. So they have more red in the color spectrum. And what happens is everything sort of uh, dulls down a little bit and you get a lot of warm colors. If that's the tone that you want, then that's fine. But just make sure that whatever it is that you're displaying is nice and clear on screen. If you want uh, good globes, fluorescent globes are the best. Anything 4000 Kelvin and above is ideal. So your cool white, your natural, or to a certain extent, even your daylight. But don't go too far in your Kelvin count. So, you know, 5000 would be the max that I would go because what happens is in order to get the white light, uh, what happens is the, uh, the globes have more blue in the color spectrum and um, that can sometimes distort um, your coloring as well depending on what it is that you're showing. So cool white to natural is probably your best option. And uh, I know this because I worked for a lighting company for seven years. Um, I also did a kind of did a schooling as well. I got a diploma in lighting so trust me, take my word for it. Cool white, natural light is the best way to go. Uh, to really get nice bright low up white like what you're seeing right now. Um, <clears throat> make sure that your camera's stationary. Um, you know, well, stationary to a certain extent. Like if you're in the studio like I am now, you know, put it on a tripod, stick a taper to a box, um, avoid having to do things with one hand because uh, I have seen people sort of struggle to do certain things with one hand. Um, so, you know, that, that could certainly help you um, yourself just to have the free hands uh, as well as you know help your viewers so that they don't see you struggling. Um, make sure that you're prepared. Uh, I have seen some videos in the past where people leave the room to go and get something that they've forgotten about. Um, as you can see here, I've laid out everything that I was going to talk about before I started this video. So I am prepared. Um, have sort of a mental script of what it is that you're going to say. And if you stuff up, hey, you know, start again. I mean, you guys have seen my bloopers and I'm sure I'm going to put some bloopers at the end of this video as well. So, you know, it takes a lot of time to uh, get things right sometimes. Don't be afraid to start over. Um, alternatively, you know, learn to do some basic editing. You don't have to do any special effects or any crazy music videos um, to get the message across. If uh, you just cut out the bad bits and get to the, to the good bits of what it is that you want to talk about, then, uh, you know, your videos will be a lot better. Sound is also another thing that's important. Um, you know, if you don't have the facility for microphones, make sure that if you're recording something with a handheld camera, you're not blocking the microphone. Make sure you speak nice and clear and loud. Uh, not too loud, you don't want to be screaming at your audience, but um, you know, just make sure that you're nice and uh, clear and understandable. Uh, I think that's, that's important as well. Um, and really, you know, focus as well. That also depends on the camera. Don't try to move in too close because, you know, too quick because then uh, the camera may not focus in time. Um, you know, try to do things within a certain space so that the camera is not working uh, crazy with the, uh, with the focus. Um, and that's really all about it. You know, there are four or five things that I mentioned there. Other than that, the rest of it is up to you. The content is entirely up to you. How, what content you're going to be talking about, how you present it, that's entirely, you know, that's on you. Um, if you get the other things right, well, you know, you, you're on the right step, you're on the right track. Um, I know that I'm not doing everything correct. I know that, uh, you know, there are certain things that I can certainly improve on, but, uh, you know, I'm trying. I do watch a lot of other channels and I try to pick up little things uh, to make this channel and what I do a little bit better and a little bit uh, more watchable for you guys. So, you know, I hope you appreciate that at least. That's pretty much it for this episode of RC Pit Stop, guys. I'm not going to waffle on too much longer. I hope, um, you know, you got some uh, information out of this. Even if you just got one thing that's going to help you, then it's going to make this video worth it. Um, if you liked it, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. And if you're on Facebook, um, you know, be sure to check out the video description. I'll have a link in there for Aussie RC Playground. Uh, I have a page. I've got a few people on there already. We're, you know, sort of interacting with one another. We're all learning from each other and it's, uh, it's a great fun page to be on um, and uh, you know I'm certainly uh, enjoying it so uh, please go check it out and stay in touch with me that way as well if you like. If you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below on this video or as well you can uh, always get in touch with me on Facebook. Thank you very much for watching guys and uh, I'll be speaking to you guys again soon. The camera that I use, the one that you're um, recording now on, yeah, People ask me about this um, over the months that I've been doing 
Hey babe. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I know. I'm gonna start again. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Aussie Aussie Playground. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Aussie Pit Stop. Today I'm gonna to be showing you. Uh, I forgot. Uh, and a lot of this stuff's been something that I've been uh, acquiring over the over. Uh, uh, Welcome. I'm here to show you the video. Yes, the video. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of RC Pit Stop. Today I'm going to be showing. You... Why am I putting my thumbs up? If you take away some of the, um, you know, if you take away, if you take away, um, get me a large pizza with um, olives, please. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you some of the equipment that I've been using over the last 18 months or so to record. It's not paused, I just stopped talking. <laughs> 